for the evening, the wonderful Miss Julie J. is the one and only John Kenny. I'm getting old, but we're all right. We're fine. We're good, actually. We're good. Uh, we're good. We're good. You're on, are you on the road with Mary for the matchmaker? I'm on, yeah. We have myself and Mary be touring, tramping around yeah. the area. Constantly. On, yeah, yeah. Lit on and off, like, you know, we're doing a few shows and I have another show as well, Crowman. Oh, yeah, It's yeah. a new play, a nice yeah. play, so. Um, doing that, which is nice. It's a, it is good. It is dark, very dark. And... A lot of pathos here and there, a bit of madness. Yeah. Uh, it's fairly serious old stuff, you know. Is yeah. it a... Uh, I often wonder about the uh, being free from comedy. Yeah. And having, having spent... Hallelujah! <laughs> having spent so long working, working that and yeah. working the comic angle. And, yeah. And I look at your stuff an awful lot on YouTube, you know, and it still makes me laugh, but I'm wondering... <laughs> Is it a relief to be on stage and just angry? I know, well, I... <laughs> sick, jeez, I was always sick and angry, you know what I mean? I mean, there's anger and... Co you know yourself, yeah. comedy is just a, nothing but frustration, really, in some ways, but in a funny way, but... Yeah, it's nice to kind of get away from it, and I've had about, maybe, it's nearly five years, six years now or more since I've actually done a, a stand-up gig. Right. Nice. Which is like withdrawal for me to... I just had to... I wanted to stop doing it. Because I was finding it kind of just, you know, it was becoming a bit of... I didn't want to be funny anymore, you know. And it's not that I enjoy yeah. being funny. I love going out and having a crack. I, yeah. Jesus, stop. But it was just the whole idea, let's try and do something different or let's just experience different things and maybe let an audience experience something different. Yeah. And yet I love doing what I'm doing because I love John B. Keane. I love his language. Oh, yeah. I love the language of Keane. You know, it's real earthiness, real richness. It's a mix of everything. Yeah. You know, there's bits of pagan in it, there's bits of Irish in it, there's bits of everything in it, you know. And uh, and it's great fun to do that, like, and there's great characters and and that and John stuff. B stuff is violent and funny. Well, it is absolutely. It's dreadful. It's savage. I mean, mm. when you think of Sai, people think Sai, but your God, it's nothing but you know, it's nearly like it's like slavery, like it's like child slavery. It's just battering with yeah. human life for land or for money. But it is very hard to think that we're only a step away from all that, like you know. And it's happening now to women who aren't Irish. Oh, yeah, well... If, Do you know what's happened to young uh, women from Eastern Europe and parts of Asia? Yeah. That bartering of young women to our lads with a horn... Yeah. ...is still... Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's, well, not, that's not the way it was phrased at the United Nations. Not, not, but, uh, not exactly, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, I don't, but I suppose... Uh, that's a beautiful pose you have there, John. I'm half tempted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's that... I don't know if it's a sign of oh, come on, Tommy, come on. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but I mean, talking like that. I mean, it's even like when you see, you see, Keen was very clear. I mean, there's, I was, the Keen talks in, we did the matchmaker, and everyone thinks the matchmaker, it's kind of match the traditional. The thing is full of sex. That's all it is about. Sex and riding is all they want. <laughs> but there was love, you know, and Teddy Ted comes to him. I mean, it's full of it, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's all that old stuff. And you're talking, I suppose, about getting away from um, comedy. Yeah. A break is good. But I, I, I did a gig about, um, about, about two months ago. And um, I was the only kind of person. There was a kind of a lot of bands on at the gig, you know, it was a charity yeah. gig thing. And so a few lads asked me to come along and do something. I did stand up. And I couldn't believe the reaction. I said to myself, Jesus, I'm going back to do this bit of this again. Because I just want to go back and do it again. I miss the buzz of it now, you see. Yeah. I just got a little taste of it a few months ago. So, But it won't be probably until later on in the year or something. So, What, what, what did you do before uh, Dunbelievables? What, what, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was arson around. <laughs> and I wasn't really. I, 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 uh, I, I, I was doing stand-up. I, I started doing stand-up back in the 80s. Yeah. I got a mad fit to do stand-up comedy. And, and I remember doing stand-up comedy back then and I was thrown out of places and the places were blessed after me even. Blessed, <laughs> because I was in them. And I, I remember I used to do this sketch about being born and being in the womb, you know. 
and it was like me just before I was born and about I was having a great time and all this and describing me being inside in the womb and then the experience being born and, and the trauma. I was just, she was, what, what the fuck was going on like, you know? Because <laughs> no one told me. They didn't tell you you're going to be conceived. They never told me it was going to be. So I used to go through all the, my, the first time I met me, my father, he was like me. He couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, you know what I mean? <laughs> we had an awful lot in common, like, you know what I mean? I was just born and he was pissed, basically, you know? And, um, so I used to do all this stuff and enjoy it, and I was kind of mad stuff, you know? And, yeah. And I did that for a good few years, and I enjoyed it. Like, um, it, was, it was kind of out there. I used to play the guitar and I used to sing, and, and I started off, before that, I was, Jesus, when I was a young fellow, we started off with a band. We went off to London. Yeah. And we tried, and it didn't work. Like, we, you know, we got a record deal, we went to London, but, you know, we never became famous, but sure, we had a great experience. Like, what was the name of the band? The band was called Gimmick. Yeah, and I met a taxi driver who drove me, and he, he remembered me this evening coming here. Yeah, he remembered the band. He did, but he's old enough now. He's near. He's older than me, like you know what I mean. Yeah. So no wonder he'd remember the band. You know, I think he's retired and he bought a taxi. You know, one of these lads. Yeah, yeah. you know, probably a guard or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Retire from the civil service and buy a taxi plate. <laughs> Not with you. You know. And what, but, what type of music did you play? And we did covers, we did everything, you know what I mean? And we were trying to write our own stuff, but we were kind of, we didn't know what we were doing. We hadn't a clue, like, Jesus, we hadn't that note. We, like, we were talented, right? But we had no direction, because our manager was into greyhounds. You could write a book in it. <laughs> <laughs> he was more into greyhounds than he was into music, like, you yeah. know? And, you know, sometimes you'd be coming back from a gig and you get a phone call, could you collect four greyhounds at Limerick Junction? <laughs> My my recollection of your uh, stand up, yeah, oh god, was right. that it was out there. Mm. There was you. It was almost like if you released uh, a pigeon into a room and just watching it bait around the place. I get yeah. that, and I, I get the sense from you that you're you were kind of one of those people who you're born for a crowd. Yeah, probably, yeah. I never minded it, like, I fell yeah. into it. And the reason, I, I, I did never thought I would get into comedy, but when I came to Dublin, I was hoping to try and do a bit of acting after the band, because between the band and the acting and other things, I went away and I, jo I joined a dance company for four years. And <laughs> for the crack, I tried nothing else to be doing, like, you know I mean? better than hanging around with greyhounds, you know what I mean? But, so, uh, so I went off and I did that, and I had this, and I lovely, saw lovely things through that, because we went off to... Edinburgh and different things and we went in the States and so there was a whole new load of influences coming in at me, you know? Yeah. And I can think I brought an awful lot of that definitely when I was even just playing the guitar with me. You know, I just go, let the head off and go, just yeah. go wherever it takes you, you know? And I'm a bit, I, I was doing it and you do it because you're naive, I think. And it's when I sat, sat back and you start to think about it. I remember I came here one years ago to RT to record something for some TV Gaga program and they wouldn't show it after I recorded it because they said it was too over the top. And I'm saying, I'm only a lad from Limerick, like, how could I be over the top, like, you know? <laughs> but it was savage, all right, it was fairly savage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember what it was? It was a, a doo-wop song based on a fucking car crash. <laughs> doo-wop. Oh, da-woo. Oh, ha 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 I love you, Donna, you know, bo, bo, bo. Mother says she's gone. He goes to call to her and she's after getting killed in a car crash. And it was all just, and it's all a great crack life. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, great, great, wild, wild. There was no sense to it. Now I know why there were blessing places after me. <laughs> I had no conception, I had no kind of uh, thing of like, how it might interfere with anyone. There was sort of no, I had no barrier, I had no filter. I, yeah. I, I wasn't editing myself. But I was that, just totally that... unedited, like, it was just manic stuff, you know? Yeah. I've slowed down now, like, you know what I mean? So, but there's still a bit of kick left in me, the, like, yeah, you know? Yeah, there's, there's still great energy in you, like. Yeah, and, I'm not bad, like. And there's still, there's still wildness in you. Oh, jeez, I hope I never lose that. I mean, that's like, that's like, definitely when the wildness goes, you kind of know that it is time to hang up the boots, I think, you know? Yeah. Because you must always feel as if you never, I never want to lose that kind of madness, that, like, 
the young giddy heifer in the way to the fair, like yeah. the tail cocked in the air, and he'd break into another man's land. You that's, know that that's line, dear. <laughs> she cocked her tail high up in the air before he knows she's through the hedge into another man's land. That's it. <laughs> That's the one, boy. Well, I think when you lose that, you're fact, like, you know? Yeah. So it is kind of good to keep that enthusiasm and that energy and, you know... Uh, well, that's all I have, anyway, because that kind of covers over for an awful lack of talent. You know? <laughs> I don't believe that for a moment, <laughs> like, I... You can get away with murder when you're mad, because everyone says, Jesus, he's mad anyway, like, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, because, it, it, yeah, it is a kind of a madness, all right, I suppose, and that madness was probably the, the backbone of anything I've ever done, you know? From a punter's point of view, though, that's precious. Because there are very few unedited energies out there, so for us to see you like that is... We're, we put all our madness in a, a cupboard and we don't look at it, and we need you to express it for us. That's why we love you, John, is because you're out there and you're fucking mad. And that's, <laughs> I mean that. And, and uh, what's amazing is to see you now and to know that to, to, there's still a sense of that off you, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. And it's good. It's good for me. I'm very lucky that I have that as a release. You know, that it, I, it's would some way lave enough steam out of me or something, yeah, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know what I do, you know? But, but, it's, uh, but it's natural. Well, I will. I don't know. You know, I, I think. Yeah, I do it. I don't know if it is or not. Sometimes you think it's contrived. I mean, as I say, I stopped doing it five or six years ago. I thought, geez, maybe I have enough of this now, and I kind of pulled back from it as well. I was didn't want to push myself. I wasn't interested in doing things, you know. And whereas now, I just feel as if that break now has given me a bit more energy to. Maybe I'm going to give it another shot. Like you know, I think I'd like to go back out and just just throw stuff out to people again and see what happens. You know, and. You know, and, and hopefully get paid for it. <laughs> um, did uh, I'm kind of curious about um, when you got when you got sick? Uh, were you cl close to the pearly gates and all that? Did you feel that, or did it? Yeah, well, yeah. I think you, you find things. I don't know that I find things or things found me, but it's amazing. Uh, um, I never talk much about it like that because they're all very personal things and so, some people probably think that you're mad or, well, <laughs> outside of the, the stage carry on. But, yeah, I had I had some tremendous experiences, like in, in a sense that I would say that they were actually healing. Healing experiences completely. Like um, I, I used to... I was very lucky because I was surrounded with people who did believe in a sort of sense that the healing of from other people is really, really strong and good, you know. So, you know, people call it universal energy. They call it different things. They, you know, Reiki, mindful, whatever you want yeah, to call yeah. it. I mean, there's a lot of names on things, but it's all about this energy, this which we have and we give out and other people give out and how we use that, you know. Yeah. And I did. I was, I mean, I had amazing experiences where I just, you know, I remember being in a room one day and there was four people in the room with me and the whole room just exploded in white light. And I just started to cry and stuff started to come out my nose. And I couldn't stop. And they just, they just all went away and they left me alone. And one person came back into the room and just said to me, she said, I think your healing has started now, you know. And that was kind of scary because I didn't know what was happening to me. Now, when people talk about spiritual experiences, and I'm, I'm not a... I'd never put myself down as being you know, not a church goer or stuff. I do believe in stuff. I believe in people. I believe in, look, at we're all, we all do our best, and I believe in that. I believe in good energies, you know. And, and that happened to me twice, but I've never actually spoke. I never even mentioned that to anyone in a newspaper interview at the time, and that was 15, 17 years ago, because I was afraid to. I didn't have the courage. Isn't it funny? Like, I thought, I can't say that to anyone, and people say. And that happened to me twice. It happened to me another time when I was... And I was in the hospital again. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I had connection like that with things, as I say, things happened to me. Yeah. And I don't know whether it was, I'm just, I was encouraging them. And, but I remember one day going to a rugby match in Torman Park. And it was that great match where Munster won the match where O'Gara kicked the one, that point against, was it Gloucester or who I, God, I should know I was there. But, and it was all down to mathematics and stuff, whether we'd get through or not. And I never forget the atmosphere on the ground that day. I said to myself, 
if I if I could stay here, and ju- and I kept and when everyone was gone, I, I hid, and I came back out and I sat in the the old stand and I just kept my hands out. It was one of the few times I went to Tolman Park when I wasn't drinking. I'll tell you, and I just sat there for I don't know how long. And Margie rang me, and she said, "Are you probably staying in town tonight?" And I was going through treatment at the time, like I was on chemo and all. And she said, "I won't see you for two days now." You know, you know, off out the lads one would be. Celebrate, and I said, she says, where are you? Where are you? I said, I'm in Toma Park. You're still there? I said, yeah, I just, I'm just here. I said, and I remember just sitting down, and I, I arrived in home at around half ten that night, or whatever time it was. And she says, Jesus, you're back. I didn't think I'd say. I said, yeah, but that's what I was doing. I was just sitting down inside it because the energy from everyone that was there that day it was such an occasion, and there was such positive energy. I just wanted to sit there and try and ca- get what was left of it into me body to like I was doing this with it I was holding my hands out if anyone saw me like and I did but I've never said that to anyone else the first time I've ever spoke about this to anyone even in interviews or anything even after it because I suppose I didn't have the confidence and you think like this sounds a bit daft or a bit mad but I do believe it was all part of yeah. my my living my my healing my growing you know it it makes sense well yeah, some people would probably, but I, to me it does, yes. Yeah. To me it does. I think it's a necessary thing. I mean, I find going to matches is kind of like a, it's, it's tribal, it's, it's pagan, it's spiritual, it's yeah. close to the, a stone circle or something. It's, it's something that when everyone goes yes without thinking, just that pure joy when euphoria comes into you and you just, yes, you're not thinking about how you're looking or, what you're saying and there's fellas hugging you and you're hugging fellas you would never hug and you know what I mean it's it just becomes a, a release I suppose you know yeah and uh, that I think that's and it's very natural I think it's we need more of it like more kind of that I'm, I'm with you all the way absolutely <laughs> uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you always right. thank you so much and uh, for sharing not that. at all thank not you at all. Uh, one and only John Kenny. John, this is part two. Uh,